Hey guys, this is the Unveil Podcast with DJ Wavy. Yo, yo, this is DJ Wavy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Yet another episode of the Unveil Podcast right here on YouTube. Hosted by yours truly, of course, DJ Wavy. And you already know why. You could check our last few episodes to see the drip. Uh, I think that was in episode three. Yeah, so you guys check it out, DJ Wavy. Uh, you could also check me out on Instagram at official underscore Javon underscore Thomas and Tim's underscore brush. If you want to see some behind the scenes for this podcast, check it out. All right, so last week, after last week's episode, right, uh, my mom my mom messaged me. My mom used to watch the podcast. She messaged me and she said, bro, you can't deal with the Bayesians like that. <laughs> so today, before we start things off, uh, I just want to send my apologies to the Bayesian audience. We didn't really mean to offend you guys, but you know, we love the Bayesians them same way. B. Uh, my producer told me that you guys went off on Twitter. So right now I'm going to check it out, read some of these tweets. We have a tweet here from Beji Papi, B A J E Papi. And this says, LOL, we stay giving y'all content though. You're welcome. Meanwhile, this accent sounds like forks stuck in a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> you hating on the Bayesian accent, my friend. Uh, you right. Stan part wanna. What? Okay, this person type in Bayesian on the tweet. <laughs> and I can't read it, okay? This is from Fried Plantin. That's a cool name. You write Stan Part Warner is and shrivel up like raisins with COVID. Cause we good over here. Big ups to the Bayesians. Uh, I ain't gonna read any more tweets because y'all get real nasty, but don't worry, Bayesians. I love you. Uh my Bayesian brethren that actually that I mocked last week. He said that I was a runt with a C. You know how y'all say it in Barbados. So, At the end of the day, much love. All Caribbean good fun. All right. So you already know what comes on this podcast. We're going to have some news items for you guys. Some trends. And then today's feature is going to be with the producer, the mastermind behind this podcast. A lot of y'all might think that it's me, but I'm just the beautiful face, folks. He don't look like me, so he couldn't be the host. That's why he asked me to do it, because I look nice. But big ups to Mr. Ming right here. Check him out on Instagram at Mr. Ming. Let's get right into it. What's going on in the Caribbean? So Suriname and Guyana signed some memorandum of understanding for construction of a bridge. It says here, Suriname and Guyana have signed a memorandum of understanding for the construction of a high span bridge over the Quarantine River linking the two countries. The MOU was signed by Foreign Affairs, International Business and International Cooperation Minister Albert Ramdin and his Guyanese counterpart, Hugh Todd during a news conference hosted by the president and i'm sure this is um this is good news for the people that live in the quarantine and the people that live in Suriname. i visited Suriname; it's a very beautiful place um it's really close to guyana just about what just a river separating the two and maybe a mountain it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get across the border so i think this is going to open a lot of a lot of it's going to bring a lot of opportunities for persons to, you know, trade and make money in each country. Moving right along, Trinidad, Venezuela to meet on migration issue. The Trinidad and Tobago government on Friday dismissed suggestions that it had been summoned to a meeting with Venezuela to discuss the ongoing migration issue as several Venezuelan nationals, including 16 children, continue their quest for refugee status in Trinidad. National Security Minister Stuart Young responded to an opposing 
sorry, to an opposition question in the parliament said that no dates had yet been set for the meeting with his counterpart and refrained from making statements on the latest controversy surrounding the Venezuelans because the matter is now sub-justice. And you know, here in the Caribbean, we are accustomed to migrating. Um, a lot of us leave our homelands for quite a few years and live in other Caribbean countries as well as the U.S. and the U.K. So I think this is something good. I think more Caribbean islands should actually come together and work on these issues because, you know, a lot of migration happens out here. Moving on, Antigua minister under fire for statements made regarding the age of consent. What a story. Now, people, when I read in these stories, right, it's actually the first time I'm seeing it. So I actually surprised at some of these stuff. <laughs> it says here, social transformation, human resource development and the blue economy minister, A. Dean Jonas. A. Dean Jonas has sought to clarify a statement he made regarding the age of consent in Antigua amid calls for his resignation or dismissal by the opposition and a local gender advocacy group. In a statement, Jonas said that a 13-year-old child cannot give consent to sex and that the law states that the person must be 16 years old. I don't, I don't understand what's the problem with, with this. Jonas said that he believes that this public declaration is necessary to ensure that no child or adult is of a mistaken view following an unscripted address he gave to the annual 16 Days of Activism campaign to commemorate the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women this past wednesday Ooh, i really don't know what to say about that uh i think the minister is on the right track what just happened i think we had a t-boss come fix the lights in the bro uh we have a missed tab in studio y'all can still see me yeah i don't think i don't think anybody should get upset about that um 60 is usually the age of consent around the world so I don't really understand what's going on there. Shaggy releases Crystal Christmas album, Mr. Bombastic. Shaggy, Jamaica's Grammy Award winning artist, has released his special Christmas album titled Christmas in the Islands. Shaggy recently told a virtual press briefing to launch the album. Uh, the seed for the album was based on some of the music performed with British rocker Sting on a televised Christmas special last year. That's actually some pretty good news. I haven't heard Caribbean Christmas music in quite a while. <laughs> the, only, the only Caribbean Christmas song I could really bring to the front of my brain right now is this, this song that uh, we used to hear in Guyana. Rum till I die. Hey, Ming, you remember? <laughs> Is rum till I die. Oh, that had a Christmas song? Boy, they used to play that Christmas boy. <laughs> you know, Christmas is rum time in the Caribbean, so they say. But we don't believe in that in the at the Unveil Studios. Uh moving right along. Popcorn upset at Grammy Snub. It says here, Popcorn took aim at the United States Recording Academy. Organized organizers of the grammy awards for not including his latest set fixed tape in the list of albums vying for the year's best reggae album category in his expletive laced tirade we can't play that uh we can't play that on youtube guys you could just check out his instagram page if you want to see the rant uh the dancehall dj labeled the american institution as corrupt and lashed out at its snub of dancehall music. Popcorn's fix tape was released on August 7th and is produced by OVO Sound Warner Records. It has 19 tracks, including collaborations with the OVO genius himself, Drake, Stylo G, and Dan Dane Ray. That's how you pronounce that. 
Also some dancehall artist Massacre and Tommy Lee, of course. Uh, it debuted on the sales-driven U.S. current reggae albums chart at number one. So I guess that's why Popcorn is upset because if his album is on the is number one on the reggae chart in the states, then I guess he just expected that it would be in the list for next year's Grammy. Chris Gale, Taylor, and Dotting nominated for Player of the Decade Awards. And this is actually some great news coming from the West Indies. Uh, my producer told me that, you know, I don't like the West Indies. I actually do love the West Indies, rally around the West Indies. But we already know that these, they don't really perform sometimes. You know, when we want them to and when we expect them to. But it's still much love for the West Indies. It says, West Indies batsman Chris Gale, as well as West Indies women's captain Stephanie Taylor and her teammate Deandra Dotting, have been nominated for the International Cricket Council ICC Awards of the Decade. The Awards of the Decade, a special edition of the ICC Annual Awards, will celebrate and reward top performances in the sport from 2011 to this year from both the men's and the women's uh, games congratulations to those guys um i know the jamaicans real happy about that i think he's gonna win too but you know big ups to the west indies let's look at some more sports news the West Indies did what they did best, uh, stinking up the joint in their first two matches of the, of the New Zealand tour. People, this news isn't coming from me. This is coming from our sports news guys, Theo Theodore. So if you want to bash him, bash him. Don't bash me. Theo, you're going to have to reword these, bro, because people think we hate the West Indies over here. West Indies stinking up the joint in their first two matches of the New Zealand tour to sink to an 0-2 deficit in the T20 series, right? That just that's, that, that uh, series is still going on right now in New Zealand. And we're only two down, but, you know, we're going to hope that the West Indies pull it together and come true as they do from time to time, uh, making us proud here in the Caribbean. Uh, that's it for the... News roundup. Let's look at the trending topics now in the Caribbean. Number one on the list, we have the death of Argentine football icon Diego Maradona. And um, I know, well, I never, I, I'm not an old man, so I never saw him play. But as somebody that loves football, you know, I've heard about him time and time again. He's labeled as one of the greatest to ever do it. And he actually revolutionized the sport, uh, making it what it is today. So condolences to his family, condolences to the Argentines losing one of their icons. Second on the list, Barbados to celebrate their 54th independence on Monday, November 30. Big ups to Barbados. And, you know, I love my Bayesian friends. I love you, B. I love y'all, Bayesians. I even decided to wear a Bayesian shirt today to rep Barbados. Check it out. I know y'all know this. Uh, y'all might not know this brand. It's kind of expensive. But I get it from one of my Bayesian brethren. You know how the thing go. It's a Bayesian shirt, so uh, you know how the thing go already. Interesting facts from the Caribbean. Did you know that over 75% of the Caribbean population lives on just two islands i think my producer made a mistake the caribbean islands are home to over 44 million people according to a 2019 report from the united nations over 33 million of these inhabitants live on just two of the region's 7,000 islands cuba and the islands that is home to both Haiti and the Dominican Republic. That's some crazy stuff, man. We got so much people in the Caribbean. 44 million. 
Did you also know that only 2% of the islands are inhabited? So you mean to tell me, nah, bro, these facts, boy, <laughs> we're going to have to check these facts out. Uh, I think that's it for the interesting facts today. Only 2% of the islands are inhabited. That's crazy. I know Haiti and DR have tons of people. And for only 2% of those islands to be inhabited. I wonder where people live, you know. I might have to go and visit and find out for myself. Uh, before we get into today's interview, let's take a look at the question box. Let me see what kind of questions y'all have for me today. Question number one coming in from Brit C. Brit Z. What do you think about Black Friday in the Caribbean? <laughs> uh i think black friday is a scam in the caribbean i went to a store recently right and i saw this shirt from last week and you know, the shirt costs 1200 jamaican dollars last week black friday sale the shirt costs 1300 jamaican dollars you know what the people do they put a random price at the top of the shirt they put like i think it was like one five or one seven or something and they scratch it off to make it look like we actually have sales we don't have sales out here man it's a scam uh don't do it don't go to these stores on black friday in the caribbean people save your money buy your things before black friday <laughs> question number two coming in from real keith ferg it says which caribbean island has the best food what a question bro based on my opinion and now uh i'm a guyanese so naturally i'm gonna have to say guyana has the best food but here's why let me not just be biased for no reason guyana has so many different cultures and races and you know over the years we intertwined <laughs> if you know what i mean you know the indians start to mix with the blacks and the blacks mix with the chinese so we don't just got Kong Pong chicken. We got Guyanese Kong Pong. You understand? We got all kinds of things over there. You could be in Guyana and eat food for like two weeks straight, bro. And never have to eat the same thing. That's real. But um, I'm going to also name some countries that I think should be the honorable, honorable mentions. That's how you say it. Honorable mentions. Trinidad, of course. Uh, we could put Jamaica on the list minus the Manish water. We could put Jamaica on the list. And we could also put Shafet on the list, the Bayesians, because I love my Bayesians. And Drake, big up Shafet. So we're going to put Shafet on the list. Question number three, coming in from Khalilwaddle.jm. Good youth. Which Caribbean country has the most influential culture? I think this is a pretty easy and this is a pretty easy one. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Jamaica simply because... You know, I've never seen DJ Khaled mock a Bayesian accent or a Trini accent. They got this they got this dude on Instagram, Caucasian young man, that does pretty well when it comes to the Jamaican accent and he got pretty popular for it. I'm gonna ask my tech guys to search him up and put his Instagram handle below so you guys could check him out. Uh I think Jamaica has the most influence around the world right now you know people love the music people love the culture people love the vibes people love the herbs just one of those things question number four what do you think we can do as a region to speed up our recovery from the impacts of covid and purple friends eix tree the same person I asked to change the Instagram handle last week. <laughs> I'm going to ask you not to send me any more questions. My name isn't the right and honorable Dr. Javon Thomas. Okay. I don't know how to answer this. What do you think we can do as a region to speed up our recovery from the impact of COVID? Stay home. huh? And let's just hope that next, week, next year they free us up. Because everybody knows what's going on. I don't know nobody who have COVID. Y'all know anybody who have COVID? I don't know nobody. Anybody in the studio know anybody who have COVID-19? Oh, so you know. I hope you... But you putting on your mask, bro. 
Mask up. Uh, that's all I could tell y'all. That's the best way for us to speed this thing up. Mask up. Stay home. Sanitize. Bed. Bed. B A D E. Bed. <laughs> you understand? And we'll be quiet, all right. So right now we're gonna go into the the feature section with the mastermind behind this entire thing. Mr. Ming himself. So Quinell Ming is a trained journalist, uh, creative solutionist. Whoa. A creator and producer of the Unveil podcast hosted by Javon Thomas, DJ Wavy, uh, with a prime focus of creating opportunity for the creative community in the Caribbean. And a very good friend of mine, you know, we go way back to a couple of years ago. Um, Mr. Ming, let's 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 get him. Let's get it set up so we could we could start this interview. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Uh, y'all see how quick we switched to this studio setup because this is our first in studio interview. Of course, we're gonna practice COVID nineteen protocols. I got my sanitizer right here. Hold on, you know what I'm saying? Go <laughs> sanitizer. Oh, yeah. hey, get some too, bro. But I not, it's not mine. It's mine, bro. So now we're going to get straight into the interview with Mr. Ming. So, Mr. Ming, first of all, um, as the host of this podcast, bro, I'm relatively confused as to if it's an actual podcast or a, a regular YouTube channel that, you know, produces dope videos. Thanks again, T-Boss, for the dope videos. Uh, tell us a bit. Tell us a bit about that. About the format of the of the of the yeah, production. Clear it up um, for me, bro. There's this thing called a vidcast. So it's a, it's like a hybrid between both video video format and the audio format. Um, that's the simplest form. But the whole idea is to just find a bridge between um, regular radio in the one an interview type setup kind of you know you know because I see a lot of people. I don't want to hate on nobody. They just buy a couple mics on, on, on Amazon for about $90 or $60, how much they could afford. And then they get two stools and they just go in front of a, a bed sheet and, you know, yeah, and they say, okay, setup. my podcast. But it, I don't want to go there. Yeah. We want people to feel like, okay, this is a radio station, some, but we could see, you know. So we, are we, I don't think we're there yet. But uh, we trying, and I think we started good so far. Yeah, man, I think we started good, bro. You see how good we look on that video last week? Well, how good I look on that video. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, um, I know you're a Guyanese. I'm a Guyanese as well. And, right. you, you know, know, when I was growing up, I never thought that I would be in a space where um, I would become a creative. Mm. So... So you're a creative. When were you introduced to this? Give me some. Give me some background info. Uh, my mom is a teacher, and my mom is a very creative person. So uh, I would say I would safely say that I got my creative side from her. I know my dad is more. He's more technical. He he could do stuff well, um, like car, like you know, carpentry and these type of stuff. He's really skilled at that. But 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 my mom is more colors and markers and you know so. Uh, I the the primary school I attended, big up West Rhinebelt Primary. Boo boo boo. We can't we can't Margaret's, bro. Same Margaret's. Saint Margaret's, bro. West Rhinebelt. West is the best. West is the best. Right. Uh, <laughs> I went to that school. My mom taught there as well, and you know I I grew accustomed to seeing my mom making some crazy teaching aids and elaborate projects. I can remember one time there was a cultural um thing at the culture center. I can't remember what it was. And she made a life-size parrot costume for a student. Wow. That was crazy. And then, uh, So y you see these things being made in front of you in the, in the, in the house. Uh, and then, I guess, unconsciously, they just stick. Yeah. They just stick. And coupled with that, have a, you know how Guyanese people like watching news. Yeah. So you go home in the afternoon. You have a 6.30 news, 7 o'clock news, 7.30 news, 8 o'clock news. And my mom won't watch all of them. All of them. Um, and, you know, because I'm little Quinnell, I got to watch all of them as well. And I've, I mean, at the start, it was boring. 
but after a while you started to pick up and you see this person okay they're calling you uncle and um then you see okay maybe she's not seeing this thing with as much enthusiasm as she should be seeing it and certain things stick so all of that experience as a child does continue to grow and develop and yeah i mean i could definitely relate to that both of my parents are teachers as well and mm. you know as a young as a young artist because i do some art um i would get a lot of help from my mom especially when she's making stuff for school so i could right. definitely relate so uh unveil the podcast tell me a little bit about this what is unveil why did you start it why why did i start unveil well to be honest it was birthed from a place of wanting to create opportunity for as many young people as possible. I know a lot of people, a lot of creatives. Um, if I could just name some at the top of my head. And people like um, Dwayne Bowen, known as Mixed Master Tony in Guyana. There's this young guy, Shamar Spooner. Uh, who else do I know? I know there's this girl I went to school with called Acacia Cave. Ah. Uh, why there's a whole lot of people now? Kevon, Corbin, like I went to school to a whole lot of people and I can remember one time just saying, I wish by some, I don't know, some kind of magic that I could just create something where I could just pick up all my friends then. Yeah. Because they are doing stuff and you know, many of them are growing and they are getting, you know, popular and getting known for the craft. But there are others who aren't um, afforded the same opportunity. So this was one of the things that um, this is one of the things that I'm doing to to help that um, that wish come through, just to create opportunity opportunity for my friends back home and uh, as many other Caribbean young people as I can. That's really it. So, so you're saying that you don't think that there are many opportunities in the Caribbean for creatives? Uh, it's not okay. It's not an easy question to answer. Well, not a black and white question because I think there are opportunities. But at the same time, we must understand that there are many people by very uh, valid, because of very valid reasons, don't ever get the chance to come into contact with those opportunity. For example, we could put it like this. Opportunity don't always get the chance to scale a zinc fence in a shanty town. They don't always um, reach in a, a dysfunctional household or an unsupported educational system. So this is where we would come in, come in. The, for the persons who have legitimate reasons, um, they really can't get any opportunity. Or they might see it, but they can't access it. This is the bridge now that we're going to say, okay, this is the platform. I see you can sing really well. Uh, you're a budding DJ. You are a great painter. Come, let's 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 talk. And let's let's big you up. Let's let's go. Well, that's that's actually some pretty good stuff. Mm. Um, right now, let's talk about the crab in a barrel mentality that we find so much in the Caribbean. Because you know, I think I think there are opportunities for some persons, but mm. sometimes you know, because of bad mind and different things, because they're friends and it just doesn't work out. So let's talk about that a little bit. What do you think about it? You know, you know, the funny thing about that is that. Caribbean people, especially, we make it sound like if this whole crab in a barrel mentality is specific to us as a community. It happens every to everybody. Uh, let's put it like this. Um, you're a crab. I'm a crab. We're in one barrel. There always, There's always going to be a negative crab in the barrel. Their job is to keep you down. Your job is to excel. If you don't try, if you don't keep on pushing yourself and researching and studying and taking mentorship, their job now becomes easy. Um, so you blame the person for doing the job. That's that's all they gotta do. They just gotta pull you down. Um, everybody has, you know, you know, negative people around them. Whether you might know them or not, but they're always there. They're not specific to you. You just gotta keep doing what you gotta do. Um, and 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 that's and that's that. So. Yeah, man. I mean, the crab in a barrel mentality is definitely here, but we can we can get around it if we keep doing what we're supposed to. Yeah, definitely, bro. I agree with you one hundred percent. I mean, anything worth having does like it requires extremely extremely hard work right, and right. consistency. And I think in this case, you know, that doesn't change. There's nothing different. Right. So there's unveil the podcast. Tell me, what else do you have in mind? 
boy uh the pod okay so we have the podcast running now there's this thing that i'm planning called well let's just call it unveiled's kitchen for now because i i still i'm still landing on a name but it's gonna be a into a caribbean cooking show uh we're gonna have a chef we're gonna have a nice kitchen so oh you're gonna have me host that too i could eat some food <laughs> <laughs> He can't cook. He can't cook. cook. You can't cook. Guy needs in my blood. Yeah, it's in your blood, but you don't have no bro, skill to show. So you, what you think I was beating? Okay, we could cook. Anything you could say. Name what? Them. What is anything? Name? No, I can't cook <laughs> that. Yo, no, we, we don't drink manage no, water. No, no. Why? 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 Uh, we, uh, you could cook sauce. I could cook that. How you make sauce? By making sauce. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, Aunt Will's kitchen is gonna. We're gonna have a chef. As the the host, and he or she, we don't know who that person is as yet. Um, they're gonna be, you know, just tasked with preparing different Caribbean meals every episode. While we don't know the method as yet, but they're gonna also be unveiling talent as well in that kitchen. Uh, so that's that. We also have another gospel music production that we're planning um, to unveil go- upcoming gospel artists. So that's that. We have a whole lot of other stuff coming, but I guess for now, those are the two main productions that we have. Yeah, that sounds like some pretty good stuff, bro. Yeah, I actually trying, am excited for the, the food show because, you know, I like to eat. <laughs> 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 uh, so, bro, uh, a lot of people might think that here on the Unveil podcast, we have a we have a sort of love-hate relationship with the West Indies. Um, you know, this is what the fourth time that they've come up in our news and it's not necessarily glamorous news. We'll talk about that. What do you think about the West Indies? What do you think? I mean you I don't think hole it, in your head. I don't right? think it's specific to us because <laughs> I think the entire every West Indian fan has a love hate relationship with the team. I grew up loving cricket. I, I can remember as a young child, even though I I was born in a time when I wasn't afforded the opportunity to see people like Clive Lloyd and and these people play. I used to still watch back all the clips and stuff because I love the sport so much. But in recent years, I mean, World Cup aside, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess we keep praying for them. We keep praying. We keep praying. We keep, but but no, it. But the thing is, no matter what, you can never not love the West Indies that's because I mean it's your team yeah. that's the only thing that's one of the biggest um, organizations that represents you as a West Indian so no matter how much they, they lose and win you still gotta love them no matter how much stress and um, close heart attacks that you get from them and these type of stuff I mean but one of the things I, I think why we why we keep the, the hope is still there for them is that it's because we always think that they could pull through in the last minute because they always do it they always do they always when do they it. win it's a big right win. right <laughs> and that makes the win more special because okay they're losing for three quarters of the game and somebody comes to hit four sixes and wins the game you know and that's the west Indian right, way. And, it, and so you can't not love them you gotta love them yeah, bro, that's 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 true. All right, so last question. Well, not really a question. I just want you to give some advice to any creative in the Caribbean right now. Uh, what can I say? I think my biggest thing is opportunity. Um, and as I said earlier, well, I I don't think I mentioned this part, but I understand if someone can't see opportunity. But what I don't understand or what I won't appreciate is someone n- not being able to see opportunity, have all the resources, the network, the skills to create their own opportunity, but still choose to look for somebody else to give them or just give up on the gym and just migrate to the States and work in a in a, in a little supermarket for $10 an hour and live in a basement. That's that. I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate that at all. So, Look for the opportunities. If there aren't any, try to create your own. Yeah. I mean, unveil. Uh, y'all don't even know where we are. They don't y'all even, even know. know. If they didn't know, bro. If y'all even know. 
but um it's perfect example save up your money if you if you if you decide that you want to do something um have a plan um find somebody who could share that same goal with you and just work towards it just work towards it. it's all about stop crying people cry too much man some people some people lazy especially you know? out here some people cry some people too lazy they too damn lazy just just do what you gotta do man just do what you gotta do uh, yeah man definitely that's definitely true and you know what they say opportunity makes itself available for those who are most definitely definitely right, repeat re- re- repeat this. opportunity he sung smart he sung smart though uh, yeah yeah so whatever yeah. you say bro, <laughs> uh, whatever you say so Cornell, let me put you on the spot right now we're about to end the show uh you have the camera angle you're the producer this is your podcast so run the outro for me bro <laughs> Let's see your skills, Mr. Me. There's a reason why I hire you now. Uh, I say let's see your this skills. This is a moment where you could get fired. You know? <laughs> let me just, let me, since he's put me on the spot, let me just do this right now. If anybody wants to host Watch podcast, out. All right, good. All right. If anybody and wants that to host a podcast, <laughs> and that just is send it. us a Terrence, message. Turn the camera uh, to me, bro. Terrence, unveiled listen, if Caribbean I get fired on Instagram. Terrence, Terrence uh, going with me, you know. I want you to know that. Because I can't understand. I get this man a job. And this man giving me the job. And I'm just, just for this episode. Bro, you can't give me your job right, to do. Cool. I am doing everything my job. Cool. All right, everything cool. Terrence, can I have the camera angle, please? But you know what? See y'all next time. See y'all next Monday. Um, just be early, right? See it. Terrence, can I have the camera angle, please? And that is it today, folks, for the Unveil podcast. Oh, you know for doing it now. Uh, thanks oh, to Mr. To Ming. Now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Mr. Ming, our producer mastermind behind all of this um for joining today make sure you guys tune in next week for another exciting episode oh by the way any caribbean chefs if you want to be a part of this program send us a message on instagram all right at unveil caribbean thanks guys until next time see y'all later yes sir yes sir big up all the people in big up all the people in clarendon west side cedar grove walk one albion top bottom <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh oh gosh hey guys if you liked that episode please remember to like comment and subscribe and also turn on the notification bell to stay updated